banks are always into the activity of commercial business and they are the people who are trying to push the economy in terms of consumption and demand every single bank in every country is regulated by the central banker corporate banking or the specialized bankings are one which have been dedicated which have been designed all together for the need and the necessity of those big industries Good morning and welcome to the first session of management of banking and insurance services. This is a very very interesting subject and here we are going to speak about the most vital part of the economy and that's the banking industry. Nobody in this world can ever imagine an economy that can run without a bank. So in this session we are going to understand the fundamental definition of bank and how bank plays a very very vital role an important role in terms of building up the economy. Now moving forward let's start with the introduction to bank. A bank is a financial institution licensed to receive deposits and to make loans. Now what do you mean by that? Now bank is an institution that is supported by the government of India by the RBI which says very very clearly that you have the capacity you have the rights to take money and lend money which means you can take money in the form of deposits you can lend money in the form of loans so that is why bank becomes a very very powerful institution altogether now in a banking scenario many a time people believe that banks are only meant as a term of a safe house banks are only meant where they would be able to receive money and give money banks will not be into any other forms of the economy but the reality here is that banks are a powerhouse of financial exchange a financial services altogether such as wealth management currency exchange safe deposit boxes so probably you name all the functions of the economy the bank has got it the ideology of the bank is very very simple and straightforward banks are always into the activity of commercial business and they are the people who are trying to push the economy in terms of consumption and demand now for an example for a situation just imagine that if there are no banks where will the business houses go and ask for loan where will be the scenario where they can go ahead and ask for money so banks become the powerhouses banks become the place through which they can go forward and ask for money so banks become that financial powerhouse which is able to give any business a new life for a consumer the personal loans the vehicle loans the home loans educational loans all of them matter a lot because using that only we are able to survive the need and flow of money is always initiated by the banks so that is why i say banking is such an important subject banking is very very crucial when we talk about the economy now when you also see here there are several kinds of bank including retail commercial corporate banks and investment banks now most of the countries banks are regulated by the national government or the central bank now first let us talk about the types of bank and let me come back into the regulation part of it today when we talk about the types of bank we have a retail bank we have a commercial bank we have an investment bank and we do have something which is specialized enough altogether let me start with the retail bank when you talk about banks like ICICI bank or a HDFC axis indus ind idbi these are all banks which are purely commercial in nature from the private sector similarly you do have banks like sbi canara bank of baroda indian bank or probably the indian overseas bank the union bank the syndicate bank 
all these banks are from the PSU, that is the public sector union altogether. But what is the functionality when I talk about a retail bank altogether or the retail services altogether? They cater to the need of every single person in this country. It might be a small time loan, a personal loan, a vehicle loan, an education loan. The bank is always there for you to help. So they basically try to cater the large population of our country by understanding their financial needs, giving them the necessary requirements, trying to collect documents from them in terms of security and giving them the necessary facility altogether. So that is why I say that retail banking is the largest form of banking for any country because they try to serve en masse. That is where it becomes a very, very important factor and a function altogether. Followed by when we are talking about those specialized corporate banks, there are banks which have specialized functions. Now, for example, when I talk about corporate banking altogether, they would try to cater to the needs of big industries and corporate houses who in turn have got necessity of funds in a larger basis or in a larger manner altogether. Now, for example, I want to start an aviation industry altogether. I want to start an aeroplane uh, aviation business altogether. Probably the amount of money which I need is of a very high amount. I might require about 10,000 crores or 15,000 crores. So when I go and approach the bank, they might not be able to give it from the retail sector, but they might be able to service me through the corporate sector. So when I say the corporate banking, this is an exclusive banking that has been decided, that has been designed for the big houses in order to meet their fund requirements. So I would always say the corporate banking or the specialized bankings are one which have been dedicated, which have been designed all together for the need and the necessity of those big industries. So they might have different kinds of requirements. So they will have a consortium of banks that will try to operate as one union and try to provide them funds at the time of the capital expansion. Followed by the word called as investment banks. What are these investment banks all about, sir? Where is this interesting bank coming in from? Investment banks are those banking services which spend their entire time, money and effort in terms of investing the public fund, that is the consumer's money, in terms of the share markets, capital markets, wealth markets and all those kind of factors. So they are primarily interested in investment business. They do portfolio management. They bring in tailored solutions through which the money can be managed by investing in various types of securities, various types of banks, various types of markets, foreign markets or in the commodities or in the mutual funds or in different aspects. So they are primarily into investment the money and making a greater return out of it. So that's why they are called as investment banks altogether. Followed by when I talk about this regulation factor. Now banks in India are regulated by the RBI. So I want you to remember this. RBI stands for Reserve Bank of India. Reserve Bank of India is the apex bank. It is the central bank which will control all the banking institutions in India. So the RBI serves as a monitor which will control the banks, which will set the guidelines, the governance, interest rate, the credit facilities, all the factors of banking that is lending and borrowing is always set in pace by the RBI. So when a bank has to take a license and has to operate accordingly, which means RBI has to give the permission without the permission of RBI, without the consent of RBI, you will not be able to operate in India. So even if a foreign bank tries to come into India and they want to set up their branch, for example, HSBC Bank, or when you are talking about the Deutsche Bank, or you are talking about Bank of America, or you are talking about the Nova Scotia Bank, or you are talking about BNP Paribas, or DBS, the Development Bank of Singapore, all these kind of foreign banks, when they want to come and set up their operations in India, it is always 
place with the consent of RBI. So that is why we say that for any country in order to facilitate run the banking system altogether, it is always done with the help of the central government or the central bank put together. That is why banking becomes a very, very consolidated operation in line and length, followed by the key factors. What are the key factors of a bank? So if I'm going to say that this is what bank is all about, this is the exact key factors that we are going to talk about. It is a financial institution license to receive deposits and loans. Now, this is why interesting is that there are several NBFCs. I'm also going to talk about it in a while when I talk about this word called as NBFC, which means to say that non-banking financial companies. Now, the difference between a non-banking and a banking financial company, we will be discussing it in the coming sessions. But then a bank is a full-fledged institution which has been licensed, whereas an NBFC will not be given the direct license of operating as a complete bank. They are non-banking, so they can set their own rate under the consent of RBI and they can function together as a financial institution. So a bank and NBFC, they will differ in terms of the size and the authorities in operation. So that is why bank is a licensed institution. The, the government through RBI gives a license saying that you can operate as a bank where you will be eligible to collect money in the form of deposit and give money in the form of loans. Now, there are several types of banks, including retail, commercial and investment banks. So what was the key factor that we were trying to talk about? Retail banks, commercial banks, investment banks, or we are talking about the corporate banking. Now, in India, we have several banks which are specialized also, like, for example, NABARD. When I talk about this bank called as N-A-B-A-R-D, NABARD stands for the National Bank on Agriculture and Rural Development. This bank is specialized towards providing loans for the farmers, for the agricultural background and for the rural background. So NABARD will not try to cater for commercial development or for the urban development or for personal loans. This bank is purely for the agricultural purpose. Similarly, we might have banking for only for the SME. Now, when I talk about SME, that stands for small and medium enterprises. So like this, there are several specialized banking branches that are available in our country, which will try to cater only to that sector or to that segment altogether. They will not try to go forward in terms of making banking more complicated. They are specialized in nature. And as we are talking about, every single bank in every country is regulated by the central banker. Now, for example, in US, the central bank is called as the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve owns the commission in terms of running through all the banks. They set the norms, they set the guidelines, like the Bank of England is the central bank in UK, the Bank of Japan is the central bank in that of the country of Japan. So like this, everywhere we have our central banks like RBI, who will try to control the banking activities, who will tell what is the guideline, what are the factors that need to be considered before starting, before giving out an interest or before announcing any kind of financial facilities for the public. Now, moving forward, let's talk about the bank in terms of the understanding as operational perspective. How do they actually exist in this society? What makes this banking career as well as the bank so interesting? Why are people so much interested in terms of understanding the banks? Now, first thing is that they are a very important part of the economy because they provide vital services to both consumer and businesses. That's a very, very interesting part, which I will say. As financial service provider, you get a place to store your money. So that is also quite interesting for all of us to know here. Now, as a financial institution, when you talk about safety, when you talk about trust, when you talk about hope, when you talk about belief, that's where bank comes into picture. Today in India, for example, I want to open up a deposit, a fixed deposit. The first idea that comes to the top of my mind 
is a government bank. It might be an SBI or a Canada bank or a corporation bank, a union bank, whichever is that. But I would like to go to a government owned commercial bank. Reason being is that the security matter that comes into picture. Now, all the government banks give us that security or a matter of fact saying that at any given point of time, your money will be safe with us. So what do consumers typically look into bank is that they look as bank as a vital source for saving money. They look into bank as a safe house altogether. Though you might get loans, you might get a credit card, debit card, all kind of facilities. But at the end of the day, where is my money locked? Where is my money kept? The answer to that is banks. So banks are the custodians of your money. That is where customers are highly interested. They are taking banking as a very, very serious sector altogether. Given the pandemic situation this time that happened in our country, in fact, across the globe altogether, banks were not shut down. Banks were still continuing their function, which was very, very evident to all of us. The reason is that this sector cannot be shut down like the healthcare sector, cannot be shut down like the police sector, cannot be shut down like any other sector altogether. The, when you talk about law and administration, when you talk about healthcare, the immediately the next sector which cannot be shut down is the banking sector. They just cannot close down the operations because 24 bar 7, the economy is completely dependent on them. At any given point of time, if you are not able to cater to the need of the people, cater to the needs of the consumer, the economy comes to a complete grinding halt. So that is why banking is one of the most interesting factor. It's one of the most crucial factor for any economics, for any economy to prosper altogether. Though there are various account types such as you have a checking account, you have a savings account, you have a current account, so many factors that comes into picture. The bank's ideology is more towards the savings account. Why? Because that is where most of the people tend to put in their money and hold it for a longer time. And you will have certificates of deposit, which means to say that the bank will give you in return a certificate of deposit. That means to say that they will give you a acknowledgement saying that yes, we have borrowed money from you and we will be paying you at this rate of interest. So that is what we call it as certificate of deposit and that can be used for your withdrawals. And you know, for example, whenever you want to take out the money, whenever you want to use it, whenever you want to go further in terms of uh, using the money for any of the purpose, banks will be able to give you back at the prevailing rate of interest altogether. So that is why banks are always a very, very important function in terms of understanding it. Followed by when we are talking about the banking transactions like deposits, withdrawals from ATM or using the bank in these days using for UPI payments or bill payments or an immediate transaction, bank is the backbone altogether. Though we have a Google Pay, we have a phone pay, we have a Paytm, we have so many factors. But from where this money is being transacted towards the trader or towards that shop, it is from the bank. So banks are the vital center for growth altogether. Moving forward, the functions of the bank. What are the functions of the bank? Yes, we have spoken about it in a very, very short manner. Let's try to look in detail. What are the functions that are being done by the bank? The first one is acceptance of deposit. Yes, they do accept deposits at a particular rate of interest followed lending by lending of funds. They do give money to people in the form of loans again at a particular rate of interest depending on the nature and type of loans that has been borrowed by the customer. Next clearing of checks. Today when you go to a bank, you deposit your check. The check has to be cleared by the bank. Then only the money will be deposited back followed by remittance of fund. All the funds that are being collected has to be remitted. It has to be collected, it has been put back into place. So remittance of fund. Lockers and safe deposit where people try to keep their gold, people try to keep their valuables. All that functions are done by the 
functions of the bank in terms of safeguarding the consumers details and the properties followed by the bill payment and services which is a very very important service today because with the factor of e-banking and digital banking coming into picture the bill payment services matters a lot in terms of growth in terms of development of digital payment sector then the online banking since we have all gone towards the digital banking ideology altogether definitely yes online banking is now becoming a very very interesting sector everybody is talking about digital payments the digitized way of doing banking it is here followed by credit and debit cards it's a very very fancy thing let me tell you today you have all types of credit cards and debit cards with different logos with different names and title these are the plastic money which i would like to talk about we will be discussing about it in detail but then the introduction of plastic money has today made people to forget the notes altogether it's very very simple just to swipe your card the money gets automatically deducted from your account or the money can be taken on a credit basis but then that's the interesting part of having the debit and the credit card the overseas banking sector and services where you are able to send money to your near and dear in abroad as well as receive money from them so the international banking is a very very big concept followed by wealth management for all the hni when i say hni that means high net worth individuals all these people are very very important for the banks because they might have huge amount of wealth which needs to be properly managed and guided in terms of investment so definitely that's one of the big work here where they take it in terms of wealth management and investment banking plus they also cater to you in terms of the social objectives now what are social objectives bank is a form of a powerhouse which will try to cater to the needs of the society at any given point of time they just don't want to give up on things saying that it's just a social objective we are also a part of the society we will only work for money but they take care of the society they do provide a lot of loans and schemes through which social empowerment or for women empowerment or for child education they do contribute in their own wavelength for the welfare of the society followed by the departments of bank again we are going to talk about the retail consumer bank where we are talking about the deposits the savings checking account or probably what we call it as your uh, the current account the mortgages advance cards department the back office this is very very important that is coming in because the back office or the back end operations for a bank today is become highly important they manage the technology they manage the customer relationship they have a call center so if a consumer has got any problem he can call back and he can get his queries resolved altogether followed by the commercial and corporate banking definitely today most of the banks also have their own planning division they also have their own setup in terms of running the operations more smoothly so bank is not any more just you know a small place where you see people only coming in and taking money and going out but it is a planned enterprise which has got many subdivisions under it which tries to work together round the clock so that the money is safe and the consumer is able to continue his trust in banking with this i would like to come to the end of the first session i hope and believe all the information provided is of high resource and of a great help to you in the next session we will be talking about the functions of a banker until then stay tuned stay blessed and stay enlightened forever thank you once again for joining me on this wonderful session